I'm happy to have uh, Karin Nierberg here. She's a professor at the University of Oslo. And today we're going to continue our express views. Karin, hello, how are you doing? Hello, hello I'm good. Can we start? Yes. All right. Karin, what is your most favorite article in environmental economics? I have to admit, I don't really have a favorite, but I can recommend a recent one uh, by um, Mats Greaker and Christopher Mittema. Uh, it was published in 2016 in Journal of Public Economics, and it's called uh, Optimal Environmental Policy with Network Effects. That's a nice one. I'll have to read that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what book should every environmental economist have read? Lynn Alstrom's 1990 book on governing the commons. Who is your most favorite environmental economist? Uh, then I have to say Scott Barrett. I really love the way he starts his analysis by digging deeply into the details of the cases interested in and then using those details as the basis for his theoretical analysis. Interesting. Uh, should social norms see a stronger involvement in climate policy? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, I, I usually think of uh, social norms as a sort of coordination equilibrium. And um, so if we had a social norm for um, climate friendly behavior, it would mean that um, people expected climate friendly behavior to be so individually beneficial, for example, in terms of social approval, that we all wanted to behave climate friendly. And that's clearly not how things are today. I think for some behaviors, it would be possible to create norms like that and pos possibly policy could help tipping us to those norms. Uh, but for other behaviors, I think we need uh, more formal regulation. Can nudging solve our climate problems? No, but they may help. The stern or not our discount rate? Well, as always, the answer depends on the question and the exact question. And if what you want to know is whether climate change, I don't really think that's a question that economics is well suited to answer because I think that's basically um, an ethical and political question. But I think economics measuring costs and benefits, for example, and choosing discount rates is uh, helps clarifying the pros and cons. That's what economics is best at, I think, not providing the answers. Do you buy carbon offsets when flying? I used to. Um, when I started working as a state employee some years ago, I stopped doing it for work travels because they had this central mechanism that was supposed to take care of it. And then I think I, I sort of got out of the habit. So now I, I sometimes even forget doing it for private traveling, but I intend to do it for private traveling. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> um, egalitarianism, utilitarianism, equality of opportunity, libertarianism. What theory of equality of opportunity? Do you believe in God? I do believe in the holiness of creation, but I'm not sure if that means that I believe in God. President Donald Trump. Good or bad for the USA? A disaster for all of us. If you could spend one hour with a person of your choice, who would it be and why? Um, I once spent an hour talking to Amartya Sen when I was a PhD student, and I would really like doing that again. It, and why? Because he was... Uh, it's one of the most interesting conversations I ever had. I can't believe that. Uh, so please complete the sentences. The Homo economicus for me is... A mathematical construction. 
If I could turn back time at maximum 56 years, I would... Not do it. <laughs> the study of environmental economics is... It's fun, it is challenging, and it is very important, and you should continue doing it. Life on planet Earth in 2100 will be... Very hot. Very pessimistic. If Aristoteles was still alive, then... He would be very, very old. <laughs> Karin, I very much enjoyed this interview with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for calling. <laughs>